Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you all on the behalf of the Department of Therapy Medicine for being with us right now. Dr. Akshita Rao will be presenting this interesting case, and Paris will discuss the interview with our multidisciplinary team, radiology and pathology. Dr. Akshita. Very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Akshita, and here to present you. The title of our sister is Catch 22, a medical diagram. We are presenting a case of a 79 year old female, resident of Bali in the Middle She is a homemaker, she has been living for the last 40 years, and no other known a previous woman. She presented to us with the chief complaints of burning pain in the digits for two months, associated with white discoloration of the digits, followed by blue discoloration on exposure to the and an intermittent fever of the chills for the last 20 days, and lateral discoloration of right index finger and thumb for 15 days, and multiple ulcers over bilateral chin and back for 15 days, and patient also complained of oral ulcers, generalized itching. And such a big loss of weight. There is no history of joint pain, rhymes in the mouth or eyes, rashes in the roots, breathlessness, chest pain, or other spaces or skin in the knee. There is no history of radius urine output, blood in the urine, pain abdomen or dysentery, or headache or loss of consciousness or total neural ulcer that is, they were dropped or radiation. There is no significant past history as well. Personal history was significant as there was disturbed sleep due to pain and reduced appetite. But during the course of symptomatology, when the patient had a fever, she was taken to a local hospital and was admitted. And during their evaluation, she was found to have anemia and slightly raised ELC counts and DH, DPR, and PM. And inflammation markers like CRP, ASLO, and the factor uh, were positive. During the hospital stay, the patient developed blackness discoloration of the digits. The patient was diagnosed as connective tissue disorder with sepsis, anemia, and digital ganglion, and was discharged with the following prescription of Damars and uh, antivirus and painkillers and supplements. As the symptoms were not improving, the patient uh, was brought to AIDS for further evaluation. By the end of history, we have somebody, we have a 79 year old female with vitiligo, brain loss phenomenon, fever, digital gangly, oral and leg ulcers, and loss of weight and other So, considering all the immune pathology in the background, that is vitiligo, we considered other autoimmune pathologies uh, affecting the skin, and vasculitis, primary and secondary, and infective pathologies like septic embolic endocarditis, DRT. And peripheral arterial disease as a patient was 39 years old and considering keratosclerosis. And hypervalidated state due to solid organ tumors. And hyperviscosity syndrome due to hyper gamma globulinemia and other blood cell uh, morphological abnormalities and hypercholesterol. Moving on to examination, white is stable and the brachial index was 0.95 is normal. And all the peripheral pulses were palatable and regular. A pattern was present and by that, it was also noted. Multiple cervical and infrared phenomena was noted. And dry candy, the clear demarcation line was present on right index and thumb with needles. Multiple irregular ulcers of bilateral shin and calves were noted with blackish and sharp and crusty, angular clearness, and multiple oral ulcers were noted. There were no clinical signs suggested of endocarditis. No uh, joint deformities, but it's okay to stand this month. This was the initial presentation with the ulcers or the bilateral uh, shin and calf and oral ulcers and key like this and digital therapy. We can direct the comprehensive geriatric assessment so that we could provide a holistic management. We found that it was polypharmacy, visual impairment. And here, depression, see the 4 out of 5, so this is a couple of depression. 
and moderate risk of malnutrition, and the uh, patient is severely gray and fragile. So by the end of history and examination, we have a 79-year-old female with gray or spinal, digital gangly, oral and leg ulcers, multiple lymph and nodes, anemia, vitiligo, and several of the GFF symptoms. So as we have a significant finding from our examination, we added the differential uh, considering lymphoma and taxonomy for our differentials. And since there was no uh, joint involvement, so we have a arthritis, we can test it. And since there was no skin involvement, and then the lymph and nodes is there, so we have the monthly association. And uh, since there is no temporal association with the drugs, uh, drugs, drug related secondary vasculitis is also really necessary. See, that's a very, very routine investigation. There was anemia, based on the glucose head count, high in India, and hypoalbuminemia, and increased low calcitonin, LDH, and diabetes. The patient was given uh, antibiotic according to the hospital protocol, and she responded to it, and the total glucose head count reduced, and the diet also reduced. But the patient's lesion kept progressing. Clinical smear suggested there was non-acidic to microcytic uh, anemia with mild anisocytosis. There were no atypical cells seen. And uh, ultrasound doppler to look for any vascular occlusive causes, uh, which was done, was normal. And 2 d eco was also normal. There was normal bandular function and no vegetation. Other AMA anchor were negative and total cholesterol uh, was also within the normal range. Five markers were also negative. And inner globulins, cryoglobulin, uh, screen glucose anticoagulant were negative. CF protein electrophoresis showed a narrow end band uh, with the IgG lambda, but it was not significant. He went ahead with left posterior cervical lymph node biopsy and skin biopsy. Was also done. So, by the uh, available uh, metrological investigations, we were able to narrow down our infections further. So, since uh, the reduction of the infection did not reduce the progression of the disease, the second MRI became a less likely possibility. And 2D echo was normal and there was no normal and no clinical signs. So, endocarditis became less likely. And qualification and clinical profile were normal. So, we actually became a lesser. And since the patient did not have any risk factors like hypertension or diabetes, and all the peripheral pulses were calculable, and top level was also normal, so peripheral artery disease was also lesser. And peripheral smear did not show any abnormalities or atypical cells, and total cholesterol was also normal. So these causes of hyperviscosity were also normal. And uh, considering the autoimmune markers, and associated vasculitis and SLE and other metabolic conditions were again lesser. And hepatitis B and C were also negative. Triaglobulin was also negative. And uh, CF protein electrophoresis was uh, not significant, and there were no fat fevers, so we had left with the following infections. So, meanwhile, the patient was being managed with antibiotics, hematological agents. And uh, pain, optimize, uh, pain management optimization in conjunction with palliative medicine. And dietary and physiotherapy intervention with high protein diet and bedside active and passive exercises for the management of therapy and sarcopenia. And psychological counseling for uh, depression. And then that the error was corrected. By this time, we got the so this uh, CC chest and abdomen and breast cancer. as well. Now I call upon SRB to discuss. So, CCT next session is already done for the patient. In the CCT next, you can see multiple canal is not uh, in upper mid. Uh, in the upper mid, I am not going to do that. So, in the action also, you can see. Multiple enlarged lymph nodes. No necrosis is seen within the lymph nodes. And in the media term, we can see pericardial effusion, mild pericardial effusion. 
So uh, with this morphology, if the peritoneal and TCL lymphoma, we will get a lot of uh, loss of large number of histiocytes. In the AIDS morphology, it's uh, a major effect, not a specific lymphoma, but sometimes the TCL NOA is a morphological subtype. In the skin biopsy, in the scanner view, with the ulceration of the epidermis, complete total epidermis necrosis, followed by some bacterial colonies. If you see the downies, there are two vessels, you can see here the higher power, and there are the, uh, uh, the vessels infiltrated by lymphocytes, and uh, the lumen is almost obliterated. You can see this lumen is obliterated, and lympho, uh, followed by lymphocytes infiltrated, but it's just beneath the ulcer. Uh, so that's why you cannot say exactly the book, it is a necrosis of the wall. So it may be associated with vasculitis, or there is ulceration, we have to rule out. It should be taken from other areas, which can show only the vascular centric to paravascular. This may be negative, it's not a specific one. Thank you. Patient is presenting with rheumatology manifestation. 
The recommendations are in his patient presenting with asymmetric polyarthritis, presenting in elderly person with an exposed to onset and sparing of small dents. If there is palmar fasciitis or arthritis, if there is presentation of Raynaud's phenomenon after the age of 50 years, as was in our case, if there is presentation of cutaneous leukocytoplastic vasculites after the age of 50 years, or if there is rheumatic disorders that are unresponsive to corticosteroid or immunosuppressor. So now coming to the second part, that is vasculites as a paranoplastic syndrome. It was first proposed in 1986 by Longley, who suggested that malignant lesions may produce antigens, consequently leading to the paranoplastic vasculite. Vasculites as a paranoplastic syndrome is usually changes comprising 40 to, uh, 30 to 40 percent of the cases and is generally associated with hematologic malignancy. The combination of hematologic malignancy and vasculites is, has been usually is reported only in case reports and all the literature review is based on those case reports. Most of the patients are older adults with a mean age of 65.3 years with male predominance. So the mechanism of vasculites in lymphoma that has been proposed is either tumor antigens, the tu lymphoma produces tumor antigens that lead to cross reactivity with the vessel wall antigens and results in the paraneoplastic cutaneous vasculite or they result in abnormal activation of lymphocyte itself, release of aberrant cytokines that in turn lead to uh, paraneoplastic symptoms. So the review, uh, first review was done by uh, by Ria Atta of the University of Florida Tumor Registry and review of the American literature. He explained total of 13 patients, 10 of these had cutaneous vasculites antedating the tumor diagnosis itself and concomitant polyarthritis occurred in 3 of those patients. He found that the majority of the non-cutaneous vasculites were polyarthritis medusa. In the Florida registry itself, 8 of the 1730 patients with lymphopolyphyretal disorders had vasculites. No vasculites was reported in 13,160 cases of other malignancies. In his review of the entire American literature till 2015, he found that 41 of the 75,000 patients with hematological malignancies had vasculites, while as 11 of the 8,89,000 with other malignancies had vasculites. Another review that was done by Shams Graro, they studied 22 vasculized patients and identified 11 patients with associated neoplasia. Seven of those had hematological malignancies. In another review of vasculites and lymphopolyphyretal diseases, Wooten and Jason they reviewed the association of vasculites and lymphopolyphyretal diseases and found that most of these had cutaneous vasculites and the most common was pyrolopin. In another review uh, of vasculites and cancer, Korzak and Kohan identified a total of 28 cases of the world literature review that they did and 18 of them had cutaneous vasculites. Review of literature from India, a total of three case reports have been reported from India. The first one is from the PGI Chandigarh, where they reported paranoplastic leukocytoplastic vasculitis in CLL patient. The second one is from Kolkata, in which they reported vasculitis associated with angioimmunoblastic lymphoma. Uh, the third one is from the Army College of Medical Sciences, in which again they reported vasculitis in association with angioimmunoblastic lymphoma. So management, how do we manage these paraneoplastic syndromes associated with uh, lymphomas? Most of them respond to chemotherapy only. Uh, cutaneous vasculites especially responds to the chemo chemotherapy itself. But if there is systemic vasculites, as I did report, three, uh, three reports were there. Both, all of them were fatal and all of them had fatality within three months. Now coming to the last part of the review of literature, that is T-cell lymphoma not otherwise specified. It is the uh, most common type of preferred T-cell lymphoma, constituting 25% of PTCL. Median age is 60 years with male predominance. Nodal involvement is usually present at the time of diagnosis and uh, advanced stage is usually the presentation at population 70%. In our case, it was a type of uh, T-cell lymphoma non specified otherwise known as Lennart lymphoma. First described by Carl Lennart in 1952 and later by Lennart and Metzler. Uh, it is initially was designated as epithelioid cellular granulomatosis, characterized by a large number of epithelioid cells arranged in clusters. This was initially difficult to be differentiated from Hodgkin's lymphoma, but it is, with the advent of immunohistochemistry, it was found to be of T cell lineage. Coming to the treatment, uh, treatment usually is high dose chemotherapy with allogenic stem cell transplant uh, if the patient is eligible for the same. Uh, regimes usually include CHOP. Uh, chop with etopicide or if there is flex therapy. However, in our patient, because of the underlying therapy and low performance score, we had to go with the palliative therapy. 
because the case is we have to treat the patient, not the disease itself. So finally, uh, my take-home message, uh, take-home message from our department: in an older patient presenting with uncommon hematological manifestation, keep paraneoplastic syndrome as differential, and more importantly, holistic approach for a geriatric patient, not managing the disease only, but the patient itself with a multidisciplinary lens on the patient. So finally, the patient had come to us with a diagnosis of mixed connective tissue disorder on demand. Final diagnosis was a peripheral T-cell lymphoma with secondary respirators and patient was treated with palliative care. Thank you, Dr. Varis and Dr. Ashita. Uh, uh, like, as you mentioned in the, uh, this case was very clear and it, it's very rare presentation. And vasculitis can precede the diagnosis of lymphoma, and but the vasculitis is not a uh, not a prognostic factor in the management of lymphoma. So in uh, in elderly in our population, it should be uh, patients should be screened for the lymphoma lymphoproliferative disorder, and they should be monitored for uh, these disorders in future also. So. Thank you all and house is open for the questions and comments. I would like to request Dr. B. Dr. Krishna. Uh, so thank you all. Um, uh, so very yeah, happy to present that. We just uh, went ahead with step by step after, but we will leave on the second page is and we will work on the opinion of the patients that have been very well after the chemotherapy. We have subsided a lot of those came on a major issue for uh, the last few years and things that have uh, unfortunately still allow us to make each other who have shown that and picture. So any any comment from any anybody? The optimist patient is doing well after the chemo, the season of carrier chemo. Uh, yeah, it is it is hard to grow in the hardware. Sir, can we progress in that hardware? Uh, so, the timely diagnosis and uh, chemotherapy has managed to save in our day to minutes. Actually, outside the mistake, we do the best. We might get it okay. Okay, thank you. Thanks.